to tax law gh and welcome to our video where this time around we begin to look at exam questions so let's look at them um, for capital allowances let's take an exam question a past exam question and let's try and break the question down into its component parts and let's use what we have learned from the law from our tuition videos on capital allowances let's apply all of that understanding all of that knowledge to solve a question on capital allowances to see if we really understand and obviously what we intend to do here is to break the question down into its component parts and obviously by the time you are through with this you would know how to approach every computational capital allowance question you come across come exam day so what we'll be doing today will be based on the just amended november 2020 exam so this will be based on the um, ICAG level 2, so that's paper 2.6, Principles of Taxation. This was question 4 of that sitting. So this is what will be the basis of our um, exercise today. Let's take this question from beginning to end. Let's apply what the law says what should be, and let's solve this question. So best practice when it comes to solving an exam question is always read the preamble and then you read the requirements so where can you find the preamble so this question says fafana manufacturing company limited now before we continue also i want to stress that in an exam every single word matters especially in a tax exam in a tax exam if the word is not important then it will not be put in the question what do i mean here they mention fafana manufacturing company once they tell you it's a manufacturing company what should come to mind quickly is that all their plants and machinery will be under class two remember that for manufacturing companies their plant and machinery will be under class two or the pool two of depreciable assets if it's not a manufacturing company then all plants will typically be in class three so the examiner is telling you it's a manufacturing company to give you a hint that hold on anytime you see plant anytime you see factory machinery put that under class two so we know it's a manufacturing company they emphasize again that they produce special fruit juice so they are manufacturing company for sure they started business on the 1st of january 2016 so that would be relevant they prepare accounts for 31st december every year okay so we know their year end is January to December. The company had constructed an office building. So what I should be thinking is this should be class four, right? So class four. And they put this into use on 1st January 2016. So it means when they started business, they started business on 1st January 2016, right? On that same day, they put into use their office building. So let's see what information they give us. But most likely what will be the case is if we've been given such information. So we know that they started on 1st January 16. They have a building that was put into use on that same day. So what we should be thinking is, is the question going to ask us to compute capital allowance for 2016? If yes, there's no problem. If no, then we may have to do some working back to get some figures. So let's see what the requirement says. And I said um, the, the best way to read an exam question is always to read a preamble, which we just did, which is right here. And then you go and read the requirement. So what does this question say? What is required of us? Required, you have two main requirements. It says determine the capital allowances for Fafana Manufacturing Company Limited for 2017 and 2018 years of assessment. So we need to know that we are computing capital allowances for two different years of assessment and all of that will give us 16 marks. That's quite a lot. The B part says indicate how the classes or pool system works with the treatment of capital allowance and that's for four marks. Now, as a guide, when it comes to um, exam, know how the examiners typically allocate marks they will give you one mark for each valid point make 
for that each valid point that you, you made so for this four mark question here what i'm expecting is that you should make four valid marks at the minimum you can make more which i recommend you do but the minimum at least you should be making four valid points to make four marks for the 16 marker obviously you should solve the question they've asked you to do so compute capital allowance for 2017 and 2018 but at the same time the examiners use a tick marking system so for every correct mark you get for every um, right check mark you get you get sometimes a half a mark sometimes a quarter of a mark but in the end they count everything and the maximum you can even get is 16 marks so let's just do the right thing and ensure that we are on track so back to the question we know we are supposed to compute capital allowance for 2017 and 2018. so back to what we have here we know for sure that it's a manufacturing company like i've said so let's see the kind of assets they have so the following are the capital allowance written down values brought forward right so these are written down value brought forward is essentially the opening balances from the previous year right that we are bringing down to this year from pool of assets as at first january 2017 don't forget that they started the company or they commenced operations on the first of january 2016 so what this means is these figures we've been given here are essentially or technically figures that they had after computing capital allowance for the 2016 year so they've done one year already and they are giving you the opening balance for 2017 so your job is to see what you can do with it for the pools that are under the pooling system that is class one class two class three this will not be too much of a big deal because it's under a pool system for class four and five where assets retain or maintain their individuality you may need to ensure that you are using the right cost base because they are on a straight line basis and this is where i recommend that if you've not watched the capital allowance videos please do yourself a favor to do so because everything we are doing here will be based on something we've already covered um, so let's let's continue so pool one is having a written down value but forward of twelve thousand. pool two 520 pool three 405 pool four 540 in that order so let's set up our workings um we have five Fafana Manufacturing Company Limited. Okay. All right. So computation of capital allowances for the 2017 and 2018 years of assessment so for every question try try as much as possible to have a heading showing the name of the company another heading showing what you're intending to do this is best practice in every tax exam anyways now what we need to do now is to try and establish which classes of assets we have our life has been made easy. We've been told that we have pool one. So this will be our class one. Pool two will correspond to our class two. So these are all opening balances. Pool three will be our class three. Office building is a class four asset. Patent is an intangible asset, if you remember. And intangibles will be under class five. Right? So all of these are written down values brought forward, opening balances. What do we have? In the year 2017, the company bought additional assets. Now, it would be a good exercise to classify all your assets according to their appropriate classes. So that once you start working, you don't keep reading, going back, referring to the question. So let's start factory buildings if you remember what we did under the capital allowance and um, tuition videos we said buildings structures and works of a permanent nature will be under what class four so our buildings here class four plants and machinery and this is where i said because it's a manufacturing company 
their plant and machinery will be class two. So any student who misses this top part here about they being a manufacturing company will technically end up putting their plant and machinery in a class three and they will get this part of the question wrong. So please and please again, let's remember that this is a case where we have a manufacturing company so they are plant and machinery because of the law the law says plant and machinery used in manufacturing should be class two we end up having to put plant and machinery under class two file cabinet is a class three asset electric ceiling and standing fan is also class three window and split air conditioners also class three Motor vehicles will be class two. But remember that motor vehicles have a limitation. The law says the cost of a motor vehicle, which is not a commercial vehicle, will be subject to a limitation of what 75,000 Ghana cities for the year. We have covered all of these details in the tuition videos. Make sure you check that out. A photocopier, this will be class three. Now, hold on a second. There are some people who may say, Class one is for computers and data handling equipment together with their peripheral devices. That's class one. So why aren't we putting photocopiers under class one? Photocopiers are not peripheral devices of computers. Photocopiers are not data handling equipment. Photocopiers are unable to process data or information on their own. They are able to um, scan pages independently of a computer. So they are not a peripheral. So photocopiers are class three assets. LCD television is also a class three asset. Visitors chairs, class three. Office chairs and table will also be class three. So you can see we have a bunch of class three assets here. So with the exception of factory, give me a second. With the exception of factory buildings, which is class four, plant and machinery, which is class two, uh, motor vehicles, which is class two, every other thing is class three. So for easy identification, you can highlight one, two, and then three. Then I know that the rest that I have not highlighted will all be my class three assets. It's very important to get this right because once you miss it, you're in big, big trouble. Each class has a different rate, and by choosing the wrong class, you risk um, getting all of this wrong. All right, let's continue. And they said the following assets were disposed of. It means they, they sold the assets in 2017. Disposed of means they sold since they were not suitable for the company. Computers and accessories of 11,000. This is class one. So we know that we have a disposal in our class one let's remember when we get to disposals we know that there is eleven thousand six hundred for class one under disposal so that we have to place that under the disposal remember the rule says that for disposals what you do you reduce the pool not below zero but by the consideration received for what any of the depreciable assets within the pool so let's remember that we will need this shortly then standing funds of 3,500, these are class three assets. So we know we need to reduce the class three pool by the value of standing funds. So we know we have two disposals so far. Let's not forget to um, factor this in. Oops, when we get to our, so this is class three. Okay. Then, we are done with 2017. So we have some other stuff happening in 2018. What do we need to know about 2018? Do we go through everything? Do we start the question? It's not bad to go through everything, annotate everything and know what you're doing. And then you, when you start, you don't go back. So in 2018, so we know this is, we can technically um, make a mark here. Oops. Should be using this, this. So in 2018, we know, okay, we know this is where 17 ends. We know here is a new era. 
So in 2018, what happened? They bought additional assets. So Toyota Salunka, Toyota Salunka will be a class two asset. Luckily, it doesn't exceed 75,000. So always check for class two. Does it exceed 75? If it does, check the type of car. So here we are safe. We don't have to restrict this car. Toyota pickup is class two. But this is where you need to pay attention carefully. When it comes to pickups, you can see the examiner is trying to tell you something here. They said only one. I bet what they're trying to say is that it's only one cabin, or what we call a single cabin pickup. You can Google a single cabin, cabin pickup. It doesn't have a double back. So it will not meet the requirement of a commercial vehicle within the meaning of the law. So you cannot um, carry the tonnage that the law requires, which you've mentioned in our video already. So if you haven't, please, this is to get you to watch it. But we, like we said in our videos, there is a definition for commercial vehicles. And you need to ensure that whatever commercial vehicle, whatever amount of vehicle you are capitalizing meets this definition. So if it doesn't, then we need to ensure that we restrict it. So the question we need to ask ourselves right now is, does this qualify? Can we get to say that this particular Toyota uh, motor vehicle will meet the definition if yes then we can say okay we're capitalizing the whole amount if not then we need to restrict it to um seventy five thousand. so these are things you need to be considering the examiner will not tell you something for nothing so for example when you see only one as they have told us over here we need to ask ourselves why are they telling us only one it's for just one reason only because they're trying to tell you that it's a special type of car right so for us to even be on the same page let me help you with what we are saying motor vehicles should be recap for those who have not watched let me be kind here we said that the cost of a motor vehicle that you are going to capitalize will not exceed seventy five thousand if that vehicle is not a commercial vehicle how did the law define a commercial vehicle it says a commercial vehicle one of two things it's either a road vehicle that will carry um, more than half a ton or can carry more than 13 passengers or any vehicle that you use in a motor vehicle rental business. In case you've forgotten, it's fine. Just make sure you are um, having this at, at your fingertips. So we are saying here that if a vehicle cannot carry more than half a ton, then that motor vehicle will be deemed to not be a commercial vehicle. And as a result of that, um, you have to limit the cost to 75,000. So here, this 95,000 here, we need to cap it at 75,000. If the question said it was a double cabin pickup, then that would have been fine. We would have been safe, really. All right, so single, um, single, cabin, single cabin pickup, um, we may have to um, end up saying that this will not qualify the full amount so just 75 will be the amount you can capitalize lcd projector this is not a computer it's a projector you can use it without your computer so it's a class three it's not a class one traditional asset data handling machine here they've been clear this is class one then trucks and trailers if you remember class two contains all of these um trailers and trailer mounted equipment and all of those other road vehicles then trademark is a pay to, um, it's, a, it's an intangible asset so this will go to class five right and it gave us a useful life to be eight years so we'll need that then one of the vehicles was involved in an accident 2018 and a company received forty five thousand as insurance so this is disposal proceeds which we need to um, and don't forget they said it's insurance compensation but the Lord says that when it comes to disposal, it's not only just um, a traditional sale. If the motor vehicle is destroyed and your insurance company compensates you by way of payment of or a claim, that amount or that compensation will still qualify as what will be the proceeds for disposal. Then we have our requirement. So with this out of the way and with all the classification done, let's begin the question. So what do we know so far? We know that in 2017, we have some written down values brought forward. We still know that in 2017, we have class 1, we have class 2, we have class 3, we have class 4, and we have class 5. 
and there were actually additions to the class four pool um the class two pool and the class three pool as well right so let's set up our workings we can have our class one class two class three we have our class four. Now for class four, I'm tempted to do this whole system of class four A and class four B. Because if you remember, we said that class four or class one, let's even start, will be on the reducing balance basis at the rate of 40%. Class two, reducing balance at the rate of 30%. Class three, reducing balance also at the rate of 20%. Class four is straight line, right? At the rate of 10%. So which class 4 assets? So if you look here, we have office building, right? And it is the same office building that I spoke about here. So at least we know that there is an office building. Let's call this the office building, right? So if that is our office building, then let's ask ourselves, do we have another class 4 um, within the question? Looks like it we have enough space for this um okay we'll figure it out as we go along so this is class four office four office building then we have our class five which is the patent right so actually in 2017 there was another class four which is this one so let's create a space for that so we have another class four which is factory building that also be 10 percent and then we have the last one being class five for the patent so class five technically what you want to do is to have had a column at the end here for the summations but we can do that um, later at the bottom because we don't have space here you can set this up anyway but this is to show you um, how to set your question up so we have our written down value, excuse me, written, oops, so written down value brought forward. The set class one from here, as you can see, right, is 12,000. Let me write this row. This is 12,000. Class two, they said this is 520,000. Class three, this is 405,000. Our office building, the written down value brought forward is 540,000. The other factory building here, can you see? It was acquired during the year, so it doesn't have a written down value, so it's zero. The patent, so this is class five, but a patent has a um, written down value but for it of 48,000. So 48,000. All right. Now, after you've established a written down value but for it, next thing to do is to bring your additions what did you add or acquire during the year because you can see because we've already done our classification here it's easy for us so for example here we know that from all the list we have over here you can see we did not have any class one and you see it's what's four two three 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 two two three three right so we know that our additions for class one will be what zero that is why it's important to go through the question do your classification and see what works in class two let's see what assets we added we have this um, plant and machinery that's number one and i think i highlighted this one to motor vehicles 110 now this motor vehicle we don't have information to tell us whether or not it meets the threshold so you assume it does and then you put the full value there so essentially what will be our class two um assets for the year will be the summation of the two things i've highlighted here 2.5 and um one 110,000, so 2500000 plus 110000. This will give me 
six one zero 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 zero. All right. Class three, I need to sum a number of things. So it is um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a lot of things, you know. So 10,000 plus 20,000 plus 157,000 plus um, 14,000 plus 3,000 plus 5,500 um, plus 56,000. That gives me 265,500, 265,500. All right, our class four office building, because it's a straight line method, you can't even add to it really. You can't have additions to that. Um, this class four office building, if you watch here, this first one here, there was an addition of 900, and 58,000. Patent is also on a straight line basis, so we can't add to it really. So this is also zero. Next thing is to take out our disposals if there have been any during the year. If you remember in this paragraph right here, they gave us a disposal. So they said the following were disposal in 2017. First one is computers of 11,600. So I'll deduct 11. 600 then standing funds of 35 so that'll be class 3 3500 no class 2 disposals so at this point i can safely say that because what the loss the loss is a depreciable basis of a pool of depreciable assets should be what the summation of the opening balance or the written down value put forward plus all additions less the consideration received for what all disposals so we are at that place. I can do this and get the sum. So for class one, it becomes 12,000 minus 11,600. And this gives us 400. Now, if you know your law, if you know your tax law, if you watch our videos carefully, this 400 should tell you something. Remember we said that the value of any pool should not be reduced below 500 cities. If you've forgotten, then it means you did not watch our videos. Well, please go back and check them. But we are saying here that if the value of any pool of depreciable assets after doing the computation above here gives you less than 500 cities, the law says you should grant a capital allowance of the full amount for that particular pool. What do we mean? Here, because it's 400 CDs, we are going to give pool 1 a full capital allowance of 400 CDs so that the pool becomes zero. Remember this. So we are not going to bother to apply 40% this rate, 40% here on the 400. No. Because the pool of depreciable assets has dropped below 500 CDs, we grant the full amount as capital allowance. So we won't bother applying any 40% on 400. No. Nobody has time for that because what? the balance in the pool has dropped below 500 so what we say is that our capital allowance please in the exam write the full thing down write ca write capital allowance here we are going to grant 400 so our written down value carry forward will be zero for class one remember this the rule is that when the value of the um pool of depreciable assets falls below 500 cities, grant an additional capital allowance to reduce the value to zero if it's below 500. Here we have 400. What do we have for class two? We have um, 520,000 um, plus 2610000. That gives me 3130000. Then the rate is what? 30%, right? So I multiply this 3130 here, right? This figure by 30%. All right, so this times 0 0.3 will give me 939,000. So 939,000. So I subtract 3130, 000, minus 939, 000. That gives me 2 million 191 
zero, zero, zero. All right, let's go to class three. Class three, what do we have? We have four, zero, five, zero, 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 plus two, six, five, 500 minus three, 500. That gives me six, six, seven, zero, zero, zero. Then what do I do? I know my class three rate is 20%. I multiply 20% by the six, six, seven. And then what do I get? I get the capital allowance for class three for the year. So I do this 20% times 667 will give me 133400. And then 667000 minus 133400 will give me 533. 600 as a written number to carry for it. Now let's come to the interesting one, which is class four. Remember class one. So let me do this. Class one, this one right here, class two and class three are all on the reducing balance method. Remember, they are all on the reducing balance method. Class four and five will be on a straight line base. What does this really mean? Reducing balance method means that the subsequent capital allowance you compute will be based on the value after you have done your additions, less, any disposals or realizations. Class 4 and 5, because it's straight line, will always be based on the cost base, not the written down value carry forward. What this means is that, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot rely on this 540,000 to compute. Why? Let me show you. Let's come here. If you watch this side here, or do you see this 540,000 here, this figure here, right? What I'm circling now is the cost, sorry, is the written down value of the um, building. Written down value means that they have already done capital allowance from the previous year. So let me come down and do some working here. So um, you can do this anyhow you want, but let me do the workings here so that everything is coherent so what do i mean i'm saying that written down value brought forward equals 540000 this is class 4 what does this really mean it means that if we have done one year so far then somebody has already computed what a 10% capital allowance on what a straight line basis what this means is that this 540,000 here is after a certain 10 percent has been taken out we have two ways we can work back and get the cost base it depends on you this is basic math so you can say that if 90 percent equals 540,000 which we we'll have here like i'm saying 90 percent because let's not forget that what the rate is what up here 10 percent right so if 10% had been taken off and we now have 540, it means we have 90% left. So if 90% is 540,000, then 100%, sorry, uh, then 100% will be what? You can find for x, so 90x multiplied by this, but I prefer to do um, simple ratio and proportion. So some people like to say if more or less divide, whatever. I'm going to say then 100 divided by a 90 times 540,000 will give me what, right? Whatever approach works for you should um, also work here. So 100 divided by 90 times 540,000 will give me 600,000. So it means the cost base of the office building is 600,000. 600,000, meaning that is how much the office building cost at acquisition stage or at the cost they were capitalizing the office building. So it means our capital allowance should be based on this cost base of 600,000 and not the 540,000 here. So take note, what it means is that our cost base for the purpose of capital allowance here, even though it is 540,000 here, and technically there's no disposal. So this figure here is still 540,000 our capital allowance here will be 10% of 600,000 <clears> and not 540,000. So 
it's going to be 10 percent of 600,000 is what 60,000 so i put 60,000 here why because class 4 is based on what a straight line basis it must be based on the original cost not the written down value remember this but on the written down value basis you still be using the 540 <clears throat> even though you deduct what the 60,000 so 540,000 minus 60,000 that'll give me 480,000 then my class 4 factory building remember that factory building when was it acquired in 2017 so this 958 and since we are in 2017 this is 2017 right so right here we have 2017 so this 958 is the cost base of this second and um, class 4 we have here so we don't have to work back it's the actual cost base so we can bring the 958,000 down here and then we say that it is still class 4, so 10%, so 958, 10% of that will give us obviously 95,800, so 95,800, so 958, 000, right, minus 95,800 will give me 862,200. So always remember that when it comes to class 4 and 5, if you don't have the cost base, you need to work for it. Some questions will give you the cost base, and that's easy. But here, we don't have, we have to work back. Let's look at the patent. For the patent also, watch here. Let's come to the question. They said it's 48,000. But this is what? Written down value brought forward. So it means that this one also, we have to work for it. So this was for office building. So let's work for written down value brought forward equals what? 48,000. This is class 5 and this is our patent. What did they tell us about the patent? They said it was acquired in 2016, right? For 5 years. What it means is I remember we said for class 5, it's not based on any rate. It's based on what the useful life of the asset. So here we have been given a 5 year useful life. If they bought it in 2016 and they had a five years for life, what it technically means is that they've done one year and we have four years remaining. So once again, ratio and proportion. So here we can say the rate is going to be what? Useful life as what basis. So if we are being given 48,000 and that is after one year, then we can say if if four years gives us a value of 48,000, then what would the full five years be? You get it? So ratio and proportion. Once again, you can solve for X or you can do um, ratio and proportion. So I can still do what? Then if five, then four times 48,000. Please feel free to use any approach you use to derive such a um, ratio and proportion problem. So five divided by four, times 48000 000. that gives me 60000 so what it means is that the cost base of the patent is 60000 and that's what I'm supposed to compute my capital allowance on so i come here even though written down value depreciable basis will be 48000 when i'm computing capital allowance i know that's going to be what um 60000 is my cost base so my capital allowance my capital allowance will be what 60,000 divided by five years, right? Or oh, that give me, should give me, I think, 12. Yes, that is 12,000 per annum. So it means every year my capital allowance is 12,000. So I've done that working down here, so I can just say here it's 12,000. And then I can find my closing for 48,000 uh, minus 12,000. That gives me 36,000. So we are done with 2017. Our next task is to do 2018, right? So the question said we should find capital allowance for 2017. In the exam, if you had space, you could have an extra column after class 5 here and call that total. Then you sum 
this is some this some this some that some that some that and that gives you your capital number so let's do that let me do it at the bottom here so total 2017 capital allowance will be what the sum of all that highlighted so we have um 400 plus 939000 plus 133400 plus um, 60,000 plus 95,800 plus 12,000 and I have 1,240,600 and I have 1,240,600 that's my capital allowance for 2017. So we are done with this. We can peacefully go and do our 2018. Right? So please remember there's a lot of um, a lot of rules, a lot of principles to remember. So no biggie. Right? So let's come to 2018. I would have loved that we still had a continuity. So we bring down these balances and we didn't have any workings interfering. But... Um, it is what it is, right? So let's just rewrite everything. So once again, we have a class one. So 2018, we have class one. We have a class two. We have a class three. We have a class four. Actually, two class fours, right? Yes. Then we have one class five. But in 2018, let's see the acquisitions. We had a new class five. So in 2018, we need two class fives because of the new trademark that they bought at the bottom here, right? Registered for eight years. So I need to make space. Sorry if you can't see. So class five and another class five. Okay. Manage to squeeze everything there. All right, so remember that whatever your written down value carry forward is, that's what we count your written down value brought forward for the following year. Very simple, right? So for class four, I mean, sorry, class one, written down value brought forward is zero. If you remember, we wrote down the balance because it was less than 500 to zero, so we didn't have anything. Class two, we have 219100. For class one, two, three, because they are based on reducing balance, you need to get the balance right to continue getting things right. So please... And sure you put things in the right place. So we have two one nine one zero zero zero. Okay. Two one nine one zero zero zero. Class three, we have five three three six hundred. All right. So five three three six hundred. Class four, the first one for office building. So we can call this um, office building. Our written down value is 480,000. 480,000. The next class four, which was for our factory building. So this is factory building. Our written down value was um, 862,200. So 862,200. Our class five, the first one, which was a patent, we had what 36,000 as written down value. So, patent, we have 36,000. Then, our new class five, if you watch from here, they said we have a trademark registered for eight years and the cost is 72,000. So, uh, I'll bring that here. So, it means for the new class five, there's no written down value brought forward, right? We just need to. And add on our additions for class one. Let's come here. They said we have what from here, if you can see 36,000 for data handling equipment. So, because it's the pooling system, we add let me rewrite this, it's taking too much space. So, our additions. Class one is from here. We have thirty six thousand. Okay, thirty six thousand. Class two. How many assets do we have? Total salon cost seventy thousand. So remember, 
this 170,000. Then remember I said the 95 will cap it at 75. So 70 plus 75. We are not going to give the full 95 because what they said is a single cap single cabin. So it's going to be a 70 plus a 75. Do we have any other class two? One, two. Oh, there's also trucks here. Sometimes it's easy to miss uh, some of these things. So we have 75,000, we have 70,000, and then we also have what, um, 54,000. Okay, so our class two will be what, 70 plus 75 plus 54, I guess, so one, two, three, yeah. So 70,000 plus um, 75,000 plus 54,000. That will give you 199,000. Then class three, how many additions do we have? I think we have just one. One, two, three. Yes, just one. Which is what our LCD projector of 5,500. So we put that here, 5,500. Office building, because it's straight line, you can't even add to it. So this is nil. Factory building, you can't add to it. So this is nil. They are all straight lines, so you can't add to them. You need to create a new column for them. Straight line. Patent, you can't add to this, but there's a new class five, which is what? Trademark. Trademark. They said the cost is what? 72,000. So I add 72,000 here. Right? Good. So now that we've done this, what's the next thing we need to do? We ask ourselves, do we have any disposals? Then they told us in this paragraph, if you remember right here. They said that one of the vehicles um, was sold and he received um, compensation of what? 45000 from the insurance company. So that would be our... Um, so obviously there's no disposal for class 1. But class 2, there was what? Motor vehicle, right? So yeah, class 2, 45000 No disposal for class 3, no for class 4, no for class 4, no for class 5, no for class 5. So that's... Um, quite simplistic and that does I think let's see if we've captured everything class 5 72 is come 54 plus this okay then class 3 55 36 data handling we've added that yeah so we are good to go we are good to go any other thing no all right so let's begin to sum up and do the capital allowance it's quite a straightforward exercise so for class 1 the sum of the basis is 36,000 class 2 we need to do some and summation so 2191000 plus 1990000 minus 45000 that gives me 2 million 345000 for class 3 i have 533600 plus 55000 no no 5533 Pardon me, my calculator. Uh, I'm using my phone. Plus five five zero zero. Good. That gives me five um, thirty nine one hundred. Obviously, this would be four eighty thousand. This would be eight six two two hundred. This would be thirty six thousand, and then trademark would be seventy two thousand. So the simple thing is for class one. You know, it's going to be what your capital allowance. It's going to be this is 40 percent i wrote it at the top but let's do it again this is 30 percent this is 20 percent then 10 10 10 and then what's useful life for the last guy so what will be the capital allowance for class one it's just going to 40 percent of 36,000, right so 40 percent of 36,000. that gives me 14,400. For my class two is going to be thirty percent of two three four five zero zero zero. So thirty percent of two three four five zero zero zero. That gives me seven zero three five hundred. Then for class three is going to be twenty percent of five three nine one hundred. So twenty percent of five three nine one hundred. That gives me one. Zero seven eight two zero for class four. Then we come back here. Remember that this office building is what we worked for here, right? If you remember, 
the one that had a 540 um, written down value we said its cost base is what 600,000 if you remember right from here so if the cost base is 600,000 and it's going to be 10% every year because it's straight line then please take note even though we have 480,000 here we will still do what 10% of 600,000 because it's straight line not reducing balance so it has to be on the cost base so 10% of 600,000 is what 60,000 so please remember don't be computing on this figure here if you do that you are in big trouble right you don't do that um you you get it wrong for the factory building the second one um here we had um 862 where is it all right so um 2017 okay so once again yeah for this one too you can see the second building we bought it for what 958 here right but by the time the year ended it had what a cost base i mean written down value of 862 200 here don't be tempted to do the 10 percent on the 862 here please don't never do that right if you do that you get it wrong it has to still be on what the cost base which we'll find out from here is what 958 right here so remember that is a cost base and that's what you must compute your capital allowance on so it has to be 10 percent of that so 10 percent of 958,000 will give me what 95800 please remember for class 4 that's the treatment it has to be on the cost base and not the written value for the patent as usual we did the math here and we said the cost base is what 60,000 and we said based on that in five years is 12,000 every year so we ignore whatever number we have here and still put 12,000 here because it's a fixed line or a fixed amount on a straight line basis per annum so it means every year fixed amount now for the new trademark the last column if you come to the question they said it was what acquired for 72,000 for eight years so to get the capital allowance simply we need to be what 72 oops let me change this it's going to be 72,000 divided by what eight years that's all that's what will give you um the capital allowance so 72,000 divided by eight will give me what nine thousand per annum we do the math you get what nine thousand every year so here we deduct nine thousand as the capital allowance remember this it's on a um, straight line basis on the basis of what the useful life so that's what you use um then we can now compute our written down value carry forward to the next year okay so this that and then that all right so for class one written down value carry forward is 36,000 minus 14,400 that gives me 21,600 for class two I have two three four five zero 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 minus seven zero three five hundred that gives me one million six forty one five hundred for class three i have five three nine one hundred minus one zero seven eight two zero that gives me four three one two eight zero for class four I have four eight zero 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 minus sixty thousand that gives me four hundred and twenty thousand for class four we have um eight six two two hundred minus ninety five eight hundred that will give us seven six six four hundred then for class five we have thirty six thousand minus twelve thousand that will give us twenty four thousand for the trademark class five we have seventy two thousand minus um nine thousand that gives us sixty three thousand 
The question asks us to find capital allowance for both years. So for 2018, it's going to be 14,000 plus 703,500 plus 107,820 plus 60,000 plus 95,800 plus 12,000 plus 9,000. So let's add those up. So capital allowance for 2018 equals 14,400 plus 703,500 plus 107,820 plus 60,000 plus 95,800 plus 12,000 plus 9,000 that will give us 1 million and 2,520. All right, so let's come back to the requirements. So this should give us um, 16 marks, right? The term capital allowance for um, 2017 and 2018. So 2017 and 2018. For 2017, what did we get? We got um, 1 million 24600 2018 we got 1,002520. Now that does it for the A part. What does the B part say? It says indicate how the classes or the pool system works with the treatment of capital allowance. And like I said, this is for four marks. So in the B part, oops. In the B part, said what? Let's call it features. Oh. Features of the pool or class system. So how does it work? So here, what write as many as you know, really, but minimum should be four points because you're targeting one valid point for one mark, right? So the first thing you can write is that what features um, class one, class two, and class three pools of assets are on a reducing balance basis. Class 4 and Class 5 pools of depreciable assets are on a straight line basis. We've made two points. How does the pool system work? Okay. Upon um, acquisition of new depreciable assets under class one, two, and three, the newly acquired assets is placed in the same existing pool together with other depreciable assets. You made your third point. The fourth point can be on the class four and five. For class four and class five assets upon acquisition of new assets these new assets are placed in a separate pool 
of depreciable assets. You can say i.e. assets maintain their individuality unlike under pool pool one two and three we said four right let me give you two extra ones for cases where assets in a pool are all realized and the depreciation basis of the pool is below 500 Ghana cities an additional capital allowance is granted such that the pool balance is reduced to zero. We said what five? Let's add the last one. You can talk about the motor vehicle one. So the cost of a motor vehicle, so you can see into brackets, other than a commercial vehicle to be capitalized under class two will be restricted to 75,000 Ghana So yeah, these are points you can make. And um, if I were you, I'll try and make six, right? But in an exam, typically something like this, um, four marks, you should make at least one valid mark per point. Um, and that's, that's it. So this should um, bring us to the end of this um, session on capital allowance. It's, it's been quite long, but hopefully it's been helpful. Um, so let's know if you have any questions, if there are any things that are not clear, we'll be glad to take you through. And um, feel free to leave us um, a comment and we'll get back to you on that. We'll come back to you with um, additional questions on capital allowances um, later in the series. So for now, if you love this video, don't forget to smash the like button and don't forget to share this video within your entire network. I'll catch you in the next video.